Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Central Coast Center for Spiritual Living Love Stream. We're so happy you're all here today, and we're so blessed to have the beautiful music from Laura Berman coming to us from Portland, Oregon. So I'm going to let her uh, get us in the mood. Welcome, Laura. And uh, we're so blessed to have you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I'm grateful to be here. Living large in a tiny square. Broken pieces seem to live nowhere. Why do I feel that my life is just pretend? All my dreams stay way too small. Lead me back to where I started from. How can I move when I fear what lies ahead? There's more than what I see. Each step brings me closer to free. Yeah, yeah. I realize, I realize it's all inside of me. I realize, I realize there are between you and me in this holy world. You and me in this holy world. I realize now. With each new day I see my life getting bigger with less denying it's my choice now to leave or just give in, give in and every morning i give a thanks amen to all the growth i've experienced and i've become a dream that's worth believing What I see is more. Each step brings me closer to me. Yeah, yes, I realize, I realize it's all inside of me. I realize, I realize there are no walls in between you. You and me, you and me, 
and your holy word. Oh, I know no walls. There are no walls in between you and me. Holy word. I realize. I realize. Wow, beautiful. I realize. Yes, thank you so much. It's so magnificent to have Laura Berman as our guest musician today. Wow, blessings. Hello, good morning, everyone. My name is Reverend Elizabeth Raleigh, and I am the spiritual director and senior minister of the Central Coast Center for Spiritual Living in Templeton, California. And we're broadcasting live this morning from, well, we are in San Luis Obispo, and uh, Laura is in Portland, right? And uh, Reverend Diane will be with us shortly, and she is in Los Osos. And we've got Charlie coming in from Atascadero and Gina from Paso Robles. And so it's a great time for us to collaborate and stop and be together. And so with that, I would like to welcome you to the Central Coast Center for Spiritual Living, where all that we ask is that you remain open to the possibility of changing your entire life by changing your mind. This service has been designed especially for you. Welcome home. And now I would like to read our affirmation and I invite you to please repeat after me. I establish mindful intentions daily. I establish mindful intentions daily. My intentions become the subjective tendency of my life. My intentions become the subjective tendency of my life. I realize that I am emitting the vibration of my intention constantly. I realize that I am emitting the vibration of my intention constantly. Now I am surrounded by my good. Now. I am surrounded by my good. It's everywhere, and I'm so grateful. It's everywhere, and I'm so grateful. And so it is. And so it is. And now I will turn it over to Travis Hogue, who is my fiance and also the center's music director, and he is going to introduce our musician today. Good morning. That's right. My name is Travis Hogue. I am the music director for the Central Coast Center for Spiritual Living in Templeton. And it is my great honor to introduce to you uh, the our musical inspiration for this morning's celebration service. Uh, and I just want to give props out to this technology platform that allows this to happen, to allow Laura to stream from her home studio in Oregon to come be with us this morning. Let me just uh, read a little bit about Laura. Uh, Singer-songwriter Laura Berman has reached acclaim in the New Thought community for her soul-touching vocal style and honest lyrical poetry. Laura has toured nationwide for over 15 years, performing at Centers for Spiritual Living, Unity Churches, and the Jewish community as well, sharing her songs in spirit for services, workshops, retreats, and conferences. Laura Berman has five studio albums to date and is currently writing new songs to support the transformations and healings taken over, taking place in our world at this time. And what a time is this. You can uh, visit Laura's website to purchase music uh, and links to her YouTube content. She's also got an ex impressive SoundCloud if you want to do a deep dive like I just did. Uh, with her music. Uh, it's it's my great honor to introduce to you today, without further ado, the great Laura Berman. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you, Travis. It's an honor to be here. I'm so grateful. So this, this song is a, my own uh, adaptation of a, a traditional hymn that some of you may have known, uh, know, and it's a, a welcome uh, an invitation for us to see ourselves as the sanctuary where the divine dwells. Oh, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and 
smokes you just Ooh, thank you you just squeezed the tears right out of me oh boy thank you so much laura welcome amen <laughs> wow all right good morning cso love streamers and those watching on the replay i will now read our mission statement with everything we do, we aim to raise the vibe. We teach innovative spiritual practices and principles that inspire deeper love of self and others, transformation, a closer relationship with God, freedom from suffering, expansive joy, prosperity, and healing of the body, mind, and spirit. We are a conscious group of positive, inspired, spiritually motivated individuals transforming lives. We just happen to have a spiritual center. Want to check us out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. And now with the announcements, please join us for a coffee and conversation 
at 11 a.m. ish, uh, right after service via Zoom. Gina will provide the link in the comment section here, and I invite you uh, to also find this information on our center's webpage in the Comfy Coffee and Conversation event. Next up, we build our immunity and spiritual community. Remember to join us Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 1 p.m. via Zoom for our spiritual connection call. You can find the link on our Facebook page under events. These are a, a great way to build your immunity and spiritual community. Oh, yeah. I uh, just want to let you know that our Wednesday night service, Date Night with God, is on pause for now. We've reallocated this time to really deep dive into the next item that I'm going to talk about, which is our White Fragility Book Study, uh, which began Thursday, June 11th. Uh, the second meeting of this book study will be Thursday, June 25th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can still join. Uh, just email Reverend Elizabeth at uh, Reverend Elizabeth uh, at CC Rev Elizabeth at cccsl.org and uh, she will send you the details. All are welcome. We had 25 um, uh, participants last Thursday and expect seven more to join us on the 25th. So um, maybe that um, person uh, will be you that will be joining with us. Uh, you don't want to sleep on this opportunity to change um, uh, what you seek in the world. Um, please join us in raising the vibe. Okay, and uh, speaking of raising the vibe, this Thursday, June 18th at 6 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, uh, we have Floyd Lula in the house. Uh, we'll be doing a concert uh, from our center. It's a live stream only event. Uh, this is Gary Lynn Floyd and Jamie Lula, the amazing Floyd Lula. They've been writing, writing, writing throughout this pandemic time and the writing songs for such a time as this. And they're going to be debuting these uh, straight from our live stream. So you definitely don't want to sleep on this live stream event. Uh, we're super excited about it. More information is available on our Facebook page. If you love Floyd Lula like we do, you're not going to want to miss this. You'll be hearing this music for the first time, and it's great. Uh, next Sunday is Father's Day, and our musician will be yours truly. That's right. I'm looking yeah. forward to bringing you some uh, of our community favorites and whatever else the divine chooses to play through me. <laughs> My biggest fan just jumped in there. All right. <laughs> and lastly, if you're able, please remember to continue to donate to our center during this unique time. Uh, we don't pass the basket around, but uh, we do uh, accept your gracious and generous donations. Our operations are fully supported by your generosity. And we're looking forward to gathering at our physical center in the future. Uh, you can donate here on the Facebook live stream. Love stream. Uh, Gina will provide a PayPal link to donate in the comments section if you prefer that. And you can also visit our website landing page and click on the donate link uh, at the center of that page. Thank you so much for consideration, for your consideration. And uh, we love you. We miss you. We're so great to hear you, uh, see you, and um, hope to see you on the Zoom call afterwards. And with that, my beloveds, is the announcements. Thank you. All right. And uh, would like to, is does this still work? Can you guys still hear me, even though it has a yes. red? Okay. So I would like to remind everyone that if there is something that is weighing heavy on your heart for which you would like prayer for, or maybe there's something you're looking to manifest in your life, please email us at info at cccsl.org. And we will pray over your prayer request for you for the next week. And uh, the we <laughs> includes the uh, amazing ecclesiastical team, which is myself, Reverend Diane Davison, our assistant spiritual director, and Maria Bucaro, who is a licensed practitioner with us uh, as an outreach practitioner. And so now I would like to turn it over to Charlie for our reading. Well, thank you. Thank you. Today, I'm going to do a little reading from uh, Ernest Holmes' book called Journey into Life. A very nice little book, if you can get it anymore. It's been out of print for a long time. We must enter into the joy of life if we expect the joy of life to enter us. Life has intended us to be glad. There's always a song when we know how to sing it. And always a joy, if we can find it. Life is not meant to be sad, dreary, forlorn, or hopeless. It is not meant to be a funeral service. 
It is meant to be a grand and sublime song of praise, a proclamation of joy through the acceptance of happiness and wholeness in God. God is happy. And if we wish to draw happiness into our experience, we must first unify ourselves with the happiness that God is. How can we believe in a weeping universe or a sad God or a melancholy first cause? Such concepts contradict the fundamental necessity of reality. God is a synonym for wholeness. A person filled with joy must lavish it on others. He must share it with them. In this way, he multiplies his own happiness. We should live each day as though it were complete and perfect within itself. We should live each day as though the joy in the universe was ours now. We should live each day as though all the joy in the universe were ours now. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you so much, Charlie. And so as we turn our awareness inward to our time of affirmative prayer, I lay aside any of my thoughts of busyness or concerns and just relaxing into my breath. I breathe. I breathe mindfulness. I breathe peace. And with each breath, we become more aware of the indwelling presence of the divine. And from this place of stillness, I invite us to open our minds and hearts to the divine beauty that's all around us in our pets, in the beautiful hillsides, in the vineyards, and in the magnificent colors of the flowers, the purples, the pinks, the yellow, the orange, in the divine sanctuary of the ocean and all of her waves and sounds. We are co-creators with the divine, and we anchor ourselves in this realization of the oneness of God within. And we allow the divine to nourish our souls, lift up our spirit in love, peace, in happiness, and a deeper understanding of life. All the doors of our understanding swing open as the light of the divine shines ever so brightly, lighting up any dark corners of our thoughts, illuminating our path as we walk in love, in compassion, in mindfulness. And we reach out to our sisters and brothers along the way, offering a hand as no one, no one is left out. We are all family. And I reach out my hand to each of you today that are listening to our service. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, we're so grateful that you are blessing us today. And with a grateful heart, I know that we have a wonderful sacred service that has been created out of love for each and every one of us with the beautiful music of Laura that deepens our journey into that inner sanctuary. And for Reverend Elizabeth, our spiritual leader, who is that open vessel, allowing the divine to speak through her in divine mindfulness. As she speaks with wisdom, she speaks with enthusiasm and passion as she gently guides us and stretches our consciousness and reminds us how powerful we are, both individually and collectively. Wow. And I'm so grateful for Travis, our musical director, his energy and balance just brings so much attention so much to our lives in so many infinite ways. And Charlie, your reading this morning dropped seeds of divine intentions into our thoughts. And Gina, you are the master of production. 
And most importantly, my prayers go out at this time to all the people that are in service with love and gratitude to our health care, to their patients, to our law enforcement, to the demonstrators, to our teachers, and to this world. Because with a grateful heart, I affirm right here and right now that everything is working for our highest and best good. It is a good day right now. And so from my heart to your heart, I release my prayer knowing that love is all there is. And I release into that creative law of goodness as we say all together, and so it is. Amen. Amen, and so it is. There is only one life. There is only God's life, and this life is my life. Wonderful. Oh, there's only one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. So grateful for your amazing blessings. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, everybody. Let's give ourselves a hug right now. Go ahead and embrace yourself in this moment and <laughs> yeah, and feel yourself letting go of anxiety. Feel yourself letting go of uh, worry and fear and becoming totally present and available in this moment now as you tune into KGOD. We are tuned into this higher consciousness right now. And I recognize that each of our souls are thirsting for this time together in community, thirsting for the music and the message and the connection that occurs here today. And there could never be another uh, service exactly precisely like this one. And so for all of those involved, uh, this service has truly been designed for anyone and everyone who's watching now. So I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful for each of you. We so love you. I love you. I know Travis loves you. <laughs> We are filled with so much love for you, and we're very happy to be bringing this to you here today. And I'm so grateful that you've taken this time, 
this short amount of time, 30 minutes, um, or we'll see it's an hour. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. Um, and then you've disengaged though from, from media, from mainstream media for this uh, brief amount of time to tune into God media, KGOD as I like to call it, right? And so this is the media of love. This is the media of peace, harmony, wisdom, uh, divine intelligence. So I know that for each of us, we're allowing our awareness to expand right here and right now as we drop all of those barriers of fear, anxiety, or worry to fully be present and in the moment now. And so today is uh, June 14th, and the topic or theme for the month of June is mindfulness for mavericks. And uh, the topic for today is mindful intentions. And so I wanted to begin by asking how the apocalypse is going for you, right? Because <laughs> we are in an apocalypse right now. Uh, and I just watched this amazing service by Reverend Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith on uh, the apocalypse is here. Now what? So the apocalypse is here and it's it's happening. And I'm going to go into a little bit more about what that actually means uh, in a few minutes. But I'm going to begin here with uh, a little bit about our mindful intentions and uh and so the context for this talk is really about demonstrations and how they are complete when uh, what you set in motion through the law of mind appears in form. And all demonstrations first begin as a thought. This is so important for us. All demonstrations first begin as a thought. Now, the power of intention is a demonstration of your faith and in the invisible substance of life, that spiritual protoplasm that I talk about. And it's what we believe is that thoughts become things and a focused thought is more powerful than an unfocused thought. Mindful intentions create a clear path for a definite and measurable demonstration of faith. Now, it's interesting how I speak that word demonstration and uh, the demonstration definition that I'm speaking of is that action or process of showing the existence of truth or something by giving proof. And currently we're seeing demonstrations out in the world in a different way and, and it's a different definition and that is the public exhibition of the attitude of a group of persons toward an issue. And so uh, there are people out there marching and uh, there are the courageous change agents who are marching for justice and they are uh, the champions for justice, right? And so they're out there doing that and making their demonstrations in that way. Uh, but today we're going to really look at and focus on what we intend. You see, we have to pay close attention to our intention. <laughs> what is your intention is the question of the day. Now, we don't want to create our lives or our experiences by default. And our intentions need to be nurtured with awareness faith, and practice. And so uh, I wanted to pause for a moment and talk about how life gets created by default. And so this came up in our uh, book study on Thursday, which is on the topic of uh, white fragility and why it's so hard for white people to talk about race. And it's important for all of us to understand and by the way, I forgot to mention, my name is Reverend Elizabeth Raleigh, and I'm the spiritual director and senior minister here. <laughs> so, um, yes, so from our book study, this really came up. And there are some definitions that I would love to uh, talk to you about and, and let you know where you can find them in the back of the Science of Mind textbook on page 624. Uh, Dr. Ernest Holmes, who is our founder wrote about uh, three definitions, race mind, race suggestion, and race thought. And, uh, and so race mind, first of all, 
The race mind is the subjective thought of the human race. What is subjective thought, you ask? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Subjective thought is the unconscious thought. So that is also in the glossary in the back of the Science of Mind textbook. So specifically, I'll just read that so you have that clarity. Uh, Subjective, the inner, oh, where'd it go? Uh, Oh, subjective, beneath the threshold of consciousness, the inner side, the subconscious. And so back to race mind, the race mind is the subjective thought of the human race. And then we have race suggestion and race suggestion is human beliefs operating through the mentality of the individual the tendency to reproduce what the race has thought and experienced. This race suggestion is a prolific source of disease. These accumulated subjective tendencies of the human race are operative through any person who is receptive to them. And lastly, we've got race thought. Now, race thought is another way of expressing race suggestion. The way to protect oneself from it is by knowing that it cannot operate through you. By knowing you cannot be affected by race suggestion. Now, now that we have those three definitions from our Science of Mind textbook out there, um, what I want to talk about is how we're born into, excuse me. We are born into this uh, race consciousness, right? It is ingrained in us. And uh, what we're called to do as spiritual beings, having a human experience and, uh, and being who we are, we're called to pull out these weeds. So we want to create room in our garden for what we want to see come into form. And so that is where we begin to place our focused intentionality on what we want to see, not what is being given to us. We're able to set our intention and create something new and something magnificent. And so this is part of the reason we need to begin to articulate that which we want to see in the world. We've seen so much injustice in the last, uh, well, you know, it's been in the forefront for us in the last couple of weeks, but it's been happening for decades, years and years, even longer than that. And so, um, oh man, so, so the race consciousness, we're born into it. It's like each one of us are born into a certain, uh, a certain way in the society, a certain world. We're born into a certain world. And in that world, there are so many different things going on at that particular time. So in my generation, I was born and, and the, the others in my generation were born into a certain set of world agreements. And then uh, the people like my parents were born into another generation of certain world agreements. And so they spent their time living their lives in that way. And then uh, we've been born into this. And then there's the millennials who have been born into, a, they're in an interesting world. They're in the midst of the chaos, right? But they are also the way showers. They are helping us to usher us into this new paradigm, which is being birthed. And so we are continuing to see this old paradigm, which is that old race consciousness. It's the old. And when I say race consciousness, I'm talking about the human race, not a specific race, right? And uh, and we're wanting to break through that and transform it. And we want to transmute it so that we can transcend. And so the way that we do that is by looking at it, not by turning a blind eye and pretending like it's not happening. We can't do that anymore, right? We've seen things we can't unsee, especially if you've watched the news or if you pay any attention to social media, there is a, the veil has been lifted and now we're seeing what we didn't see before. We're seeing things happening in real time that are unacceptable. And we're saying, no, no, no more. This is not the way that we want to experience life on this planet. And so our worldviews are beginning to transform. And, uh, and, 
And honestly, I feel like myself, and I know this is true for others, that I've got so many things I would like to be doing in my life. Uh, so much fun, uplifting, feel good stuff, you know, but, uh, but this is ours to do. This is our work to do, beloveds, and we have come here. We've been birthed for such a time as this on this planet, and we're all here. Our souls are here to do this work. And so uh, it's like in my own life, how many times when things have come up for me to look at, and I didn't want to look at it, you know? Can anyone relate to that? <laughs> right? It's like there's just, and then and then you look at it and then you do the work necessary and you come out the other side and it's like a whole new world. You have been birthed into this brand new existence that is an existence of freedom and liberation and and joy and it's uh, it's light like you've never felt it before and you couldn't even imagine it. You couldn't even imagine living in that particular way because you were so limited in that old paradigm and that was like your ceiling that you couldn't get past you know it's like that little fish that's in the little fish bowl and then he's put in the giant tank in that fish bowl and he doesn't leave the fish bowl but when he does imagine it's like got this whole huge hundred gallon tank let's say <laughs> that's a pretty big tank and it's swimming around and it's like free it's so beautiful well sort of free my point. So I want to go back now and share with you a little bit more about what I heard from uh, Reverend Dr. Michael Beckwith's Apocalypse. The Apocalypse is here. Now what? Talk. And I encourage you to go check it out and make a note. It's uh, D Reverend Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith. And the talk is ap The Apocalypse is Here. Now what? Um, it's It's outstanding. And so uh, what he speaks to in there is a little bit about um, the apocalypse is here. So people understand the apocalypse to mean the end of the world. And it does mean that in part, he says, but it means the ending of one world or worldview and the beginning of another world or worldview. So that's what's occurring. There's an apocalypse here and it's happening now. We're having an apocalyptical moment, as he calls it. And there's an old worldview dying and there's a new worldview being birthed into existence. And they're both happening simultaneously. So there's confusion and chaos and we're we're feeling the discomfort in it. And we don't want to be bystanders in this moment, my friends. The world is changing. We are called to be something we haven't been before. And so he also spoke about how the world and the planet are not the same thing. So the planet is Mother Earth. The planet is Gaia. The planet is living. It's a living and breathing entity. Yes. And so it's the trees and waterfalls and Yosemite and uh, rivers and oceans and all of the green lush magnificence that you see when you go out hiking. This is all Mother Earth living, breathing. That's our planet, right? That is our planet. And then you have the world and the world is held together by perceptions, beliefs, uh, positionalities, opinions, and agreements that we have that forge themselves together to manifest as the experience and structures in our world. And we call that our world. So the world, in other words, is just a set of agreements. It's a set of agreements. Now, this is why Two individuals can actually be in the same room, standing right next to each other, but be in two totally different worlds because their perceptions are different. Have you ever experienced that? And you thought, what world is that person in? <laughs> you know, and then, <laughs> and then you find out it's just a totally different world, but that's okay. <laughs> and uh, so the world is just a set of agreements. So apocalypse is definitely the end of a world. So we're in an apocalypse. We're in an apocalyptical moment. And the world also, or the word apocalypse also means the lifting of the veil. 
transparency. And so he spoke about how things that were hidden can no longer be hidden. It's like you can't unknow what you now know as spiritual beings having a human experience. You know, when you're shown the thing that needs to be transmuted and transformed, you can't just go on about your life because it continues to pop up. And then you, you know, it's then you're like whack-a-mole. You just whack it down. It pops up over here. You whack it down. It pops up over here. You whack it down. It's in your finances. You whack it down. Oh, now it's in your relationship, right? So uh, we can't do that. We can't do that. I'm sorry. And we're not doing that. And I know that you're here and you're watching now because you're a part of the transformation and you want to be a part. Your soul is thirsting and uh, thirsting to be a part of this, this big transformation. The things that were hidden can't be hidden any longer. We're seeing it. We're seeing it live. People are catching things on their phone and we see it like as it's happening live. It's outstanding and it's unprecedented, you know? And so usually, or back in the day, it would be a thing that only a few people would see and then they'd share with their friends and then you'd have to decide if you believe that particular person and we're just given what's on the news. Now we're seeing everything, everything. So in the moment of apocalypse, we're all seeing the abuse of force that is used by some of the police, not all of them, but some of them. And so things that were before hidden, like white supremacy, uh, and, and many people had died, and um, we didn't really see it totally before. And so now it's being more and more revealed. And then my favorite part of that talk was he said that we are totally in flux right now. Like the world is in flux, right? We just came out of, we're not even out of COVID-9 pandemic, the COVID-19, pardon me, COVID-19 pandemic started in March for us. That's when we became aware of it. And then we sheltered in place to flatten the curve. And then, uh, and then we were cruising along. People were starting to get real anxious. When are we going to open back up again? When are things going to start going again? What is the deal, right? And, uh, and so we're starting to get real anxious. And then there was, uh, Ahmad Aubrey was killed. And then, uh, Briona, I can't remember her last name. Briona was, uh, killed and, uh, just hor horrifying. And then George Floyd. And so finally, it, you know, everyone said, no, that's not how we're doing this. We're, that's not how we're doing this. So we are in major flux. And he said, things are fluxed up right now. <laughs> we're in a fluxed up situation and now we're sitting at the divine table. It's like, it's like something has occurred and, and now you're stepping up to see what it is that you can do about it. And we're at the divine table. So now here we are to discuss and to uh, make our intention to do our part it's time for us to do our part. Thank you, Breonna Taylor. Thank you, uh, Shannon and Raina for speaking her name for us. So intentions, right? Intentions. We've got to set our intentions every day. Every day we set an intention each day. And so <clears throat> intentionality is so important in living your divine life. Without intentionality, you tend to be sort of buffeted around by life circumstances, uh, kind of like a, a pinball machine. You know, you're out in the world of phenomena, things are happening and you bounce over here and you're bouncing over there and it's like, whoa, what's happening to me now, right? And so that is, uh, that is a situation when you don't have intentionality. And, and that's not the way that we roll. So we want to begin to set our intentions. Now you can have an intention every day and you can set an intention uh, to, to have excellence in your life. You can intend to be healthy. You can intend to be prosperous. You can intend to be a greater version of yourself. At the end of every day, you can intend to be a greater version of yourself. You can intend to be and available to cultivate the gifts, talents, and capacities within you. You can intend all of that and so much more. You can intend to be a, a, a stand for justice, equal justice and race equality and freedom for all. 
So uh, when you have, when, when you don't have intention, going back to that, uh, you are buffeted around by life circumstances and you have a tendency to be pulled by other people's agendas, right? You get pulled by the other's agendas or you can have the tendency to be pulled by societal agendas or by the status quo agenda or the media's agenda for you, which really just foments more fear within you. It's there to stir up that fear within you. And then you're stuck in that and you're not being the person you came here to be. Your soul wants to shine. Remember? Remember, it was just last month that we were talking about that. Your soul wants to shine. It wants to radiate and live a magnificent life that is so beautiful and so designed for you. It wants to radiate love and joy and harmony, peace, abundance. And then things crop up and we face those things. We don't hide. We don't say, oh, that's too negative. I don't want to deal with that because it's going to continue to pop up. So now is the time for us to be present and available. When we have intentionality, it means we are setting the direction for our lives. It's not hard to do. It's not like you're making something happen by setting your intention. It's an intention that creates a tendency in your life toward a particular direction. I love Landmark Education. Uh, I took several of their courses and I remember I wanted to take one of the courses. I think it was the advanced course and I didn't have the finances at the time. And they asked me if I really wanted to take it, that I could set my intention and did I want to really take it? And I said, well, yeah. And they said, well, you know, you set your intention that you're going to take it. It's like throwing your hat over the fence and then you go and get the hat. So when you declare something for yourself in your life, it begins, you send out that vibration, right? You're emitting that vibration and then it's pulled into your life because whatever's a vibrational match for that intention now becomes yours. Wow. Hmm. Good stuff. <laughs> I got to just breathe for a moment here. <laughs> oh, yes. So, so yeah, what is your intention? What is your intention? You know, we have all of this available for us. We want to establish intentions every single day until those high intentions become the law of your life. What does that even mean? We want these high intentions to become the law of your life. This means that when you've been setting your intention so much that every day you've been intending a specific thing that now when you're not even thinking about it, when you're not even consciously intending anything, it's showing up in your life because it's already emitting from you. It's emitting as this vibrational frequency that's pulling it into you. And so now you can move into other intentions and begin to uh, begin to live your life around those new intentions. It's powerful, my friends. It's powerful. And so I see intentions coming forward in the comments. Thank you, beloveds. That's powerful. So, um, wow. So this is our garden and we've got weeds that need to be pulled and it's our opportunity to to pull those weeds, right? That's what you do when you have a garden and you're, you've planted some amazing vegetables, then you want to go in and uh, pretty soon you'd like to harvest those delicious, scrumptious veggies, right? And you've got weeds that pop up and, and so you go out and you pull out the weeds. You don't just deny that the weeds are there or look the other way and pretend like the weeds aren't happening. So I know that in this community, in all community, we build our immunity, right? In spiritual community, we build our immunity. And so here we are building our immunity. And here we are together cultivating the courage that is necessary and the fortitude to continue to do this work. And so we've got each other and we can lean on each other and, and we can lean into the divine as we need it uh, to support us and lift us up and elevate us. You know, sometimes um, we can get wary. This is, this is a lot. This is, 
the world is transforming, you know, the apocalypse is, is pretty huge. And so, so we're here together and we're in this together. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for everyone who's watching now. And for those who are watching in the future, I'm just feeling a lot of gratitude in my heart for you all. And so uh, in our garden, there's weeds cropping up and we're pulling these weeds and, and we are continuing to ask the question of ourselves, what is mine to do? What is mine to do? Here we are. We, we've, uh, we've successfully, I believe, successfully have navigated the pandemic and now we're in, um, in another world and we are transforming, transmuting this world together. So what is mine to do? What is mine to do? And then do it. If you don't know what yours is to do, jump into our book study, you know, just do something. I was so moved by my friend and colleague, Tracy Brown, who is a licensed spiritual practitioner with the Centers for Spiritual Living. And she was previously the, uh, the, um, leader, uh, the chair of the leadership council for the Centers for Spiritual Living. And she's a diversity trainer and she's amazing. But when, when that murder of George Floyd first happened, I was scrolling through Facebook and I remember seeing her uh, on a video on the What Is Mine To Do page and, um, and, and the video said, do something. And I took that to heart. It was just like, do something, you know, uh, this is happening. So do something. So do something, my friends, do something, right? Join this book study. Um, and Gina has placed the information up on the screen here. It's powerful. And last week we did a bunch of introductions and we, uh, we centered ourselves and, and prepared ourselves to do this work. And so, our next meeting is on June 25th, and we're going to go into breakout groups where we will have a more intimate setting and have the opportunity to go really deep with what we're learning. And so we're learning, and that's a great transition into this diagram that I found that is so powerful. It reminds me of the diagram. It's the same diagram that was used during the uh, the COVID-19 pandemic on who do I want to be during COVID-19. But now there's one for becoming anti-racist. And somebody mentioned that being anti-racist is a verb. And I totally agree with that. And so in that first circle is the comfort zone, the where it says becoming anti-racist. That's the comfort zone. That's the zone where you're safe and you're in control. This may be the zone where you're sleeping through it. You know, there's an apocalypse happening and you might be sleeping through it like you didn't get the memo, you know. And then you move into the fear zone and, uh, and it's also denying. Now you're denying, you know, there's a problem, but you're denying it. Maybe, uh, not out loud. You're not denying it out loud to your friends. You're not like saying, well, I deny that racism is a problem, but you're not talking about it. This is what they're, the, our friends and family are saying when they say silence is violence, you know, denying it, avoiding hard questions wanting to stay comfortable, wanting to, uh, or just allowing yourself to be limited to talking to others who look and think like yourself, right? And then you move into the learning zone, which I believe that our community has moved into uh, in the last two weeks. We've moved into the learning zone and some of us are in the growth zone and I think we kind of, it's fluid, right? So we're going in and out of the learning zone and the growth zone. And so in the learning zone, it's where you um, you really deal with the challenges and the problems and you acquire new skills. You're acquiring new skills now. Like a lot of us are learning uh, the language and learning to be confident in what we know, putting ourselves out there without thinking that, well, I don't wanna say the wrong thing or I don't, you know, uh, like out of fear, not, not speaking up because you're afraid, but this is the time when we've got to set all of that aside. Like that is not, that's not what we're doing. You know? <laughs> uh, so we've got to remember, just remember George Floyd and, and remember his last words, you know, those last words, uh, I can't breathe. Um, uh, mother, mom, mama, help me, mama, 
they're going to kill me. I mean, think of that. And this is the least we can do, right? We're starting here. This is our beautiful starting point and it's powerful. And so educating ourselves, uh, we become vulnerable. Now we're looking at ourselves. What are our own biases? How did this get implanted? <laughs> how is this ingrained? And, and how can I rip it out? Because it's not needed where we're going in this new world, this new worldview that's coming. And so moving into the growth circle is the outer ring. And in that ring, you find your purpose. Uh, you have dreams. You set new goals. You conquer the objectives at hand. And so there's so many about you know, identifying how you may be unknowingly benefiting from racism, sitting with that discomfort, speaking out when you see it in action, educating others. And, mo and this is really important with not letting mistakes deter me from being better, right? And so don't let your fear of not being perfect cause you to stay stagnant and remain as a bystander. And I heard something else the other day, uh, and it was about the three other officers, you know, who, who were just standing by. And it was like, where are you just standing by and witnessing racism occurring? Or where are you just standing by and seeing something that is not, is not uh, in agreement with your soul, with the divine light that lives within you, right? What you know to be true with every fiber of your being. It's time to speak up, my friends. It's time. And so thank you for everyone for being uh, a part of this White Fragility book study for those of you who are in it. And I'm so grateful for us taking a stand. Now back to intentions. So um, the intentions that we have um, are so important. You know, I set intentions daily and I set intentions. I think it's Esther and Jerry Hicks is Abraham who has also shared that you can do this intention setting Wherever you go, like for every aspect of your life, say you get in your car and you drive somewhere, you can stop, set your intention about what's going to happen, you know, for you when you get out of the vehicle and you set that intention and then watch it unfold in your, in your experience. It's that easy. It's honestly like programming into the GPS where you want to go. And then, it, and then you're taken there. You're given the divine directions and it's very simple. And I remember um, Mount Whitney again. So remember last week I spoke about Mount Whitney and, uh, and my breathing practices and how important those were. Well, uh, there were three friends who joined me on that amazing trip. And I remember several times in my discussions with them beforehand, them sharing that they were going to go as far as they could. And I never once heard them say they were going to hike to the summit and back. And it was so it wasn't their intention. Their intention was to just go until they got tired, right? Until they felt like they wanted to turn around. But my intention was to complete that hike and I did it. And that has always stuck with me because I could see it and hear it in them. I knew they weren't going to do it. And sure enough, as soon as to a specific point, they started dropping out. I knew it. I already knew. And so I was actually prepared for that in some ways, maybe emotionally. <laughs> and, uh, and then there's the AIDS life cycle bike ride, which is that 565 mile bike ride from San Francisco to Los Angeles. And I had three intentions the first year. I didn't have intention, but then I created three intentions for each year and they were to ride every mile, have fun and be cheerful. And that transformed my entire experience of that bike ride. And so my intention has always for so many years been to deepen my relationship with, the, with God, with my God every day. And so much so that that's one of the intentions that is now so ingrained in my subconscious that I don't have to intend it. It's constantly making itself known in my life, this invisible presence this invisible guest that is everywhere, you know, this is why I always see these natural occurring hearts 
out, uh, out in nature. It's not like I intend or I sit and say, I'm going to see natural occurring hearts. I just, the intention is to deepen my relationship with God and it's invisible and it's everywhere. And so that is like a God wing saying, I'm here, beloved. I love you. Here I am. Do you see me? <laughs> And it's so powerful. It's so powerful. So my intention also, and an intention of the Central Coast Center for Spiritual Living is to raise the vibe and to be love. So we are here to raise the vibe. And so that expresses in so many different ways. And so we continue to be given these opportunities to raise the vibe. Thank you, spirit. I'm so grateful. So I see it's five after 11. Time has flown by like it always does. And I wanted to wrap it up now and uh, just wrap it up with you by sharing uh, a story from Ken Gordon. Whoops, I lost my paper that had the notes. There it is. Thank you. Uh, yes, Dr. Ken Gordon, who was previously the spiritual leader for Centers for Spiritual Living. And he once said that the time it takes from treatment to demonstration is the measurement of your disbelief. You already have all the faith you will ever need. Where you place the faith is what you demonstrate. So as religious scientists, as metaphysicians, we have spiritual tools for personal and global transformation. And we use these tools as spiritual mind treatment, uh, such as spiritual mind treatment, to train our minds and to actualize and activate the power that is already within us. It's already here. We are activating it by our prayer, with our prayer. And so setting a powerful and mindful intention is the first step to bringing forth the demonstration. It is how thoughts become things. So what intentions will you be setting this week? And I'm going to invite my beloved Travis up here and we'll close with prayer. <laughs> so join me in turning your attention inward with me. Do whatever you need to do to just shake it off and be totally present and available in this moment. Mm. I'm so grateful, Mother, Father, God, that there is only one life and that life is here right now. I'm so grateful to know that this presence is the thing that has birthed me into existence. It has birthed Travis into existence and each individual watching. It has birthed this Zoom or this uh, StreamYard technology and Facebook Live and uh, the YouTube Live. All of it is an expression of spirit, as is the Central Coast Center for Spiritual Living. And I'm so grateful to remember that, to recognize that I am made in the image and likeness of God, that everything I need is right here, right now within me. And so in this moment, I remember, in this moment, as I remember this truth that God is all that there is, that there is something happening, there is a transformation occurring, I find the courage in my own consciousness. I know that the courage that is needed for each one of us is right here. And we find this courage by turning our attention inward and knowing that God is providing that always. And it is the God that lives within each one of us. It is so powerful and it has, has our backs and it's got us and it's so looking after us and saying, I've got you my beloved, let's do this work. And it is always providing us the answer when we ask questions. What is mine to do? When we ask that question and spirit 
whispers in our ear, we know it is ours to do. And it is so magnificent to hear that which is mine to do and to do it. Oh, we've reached this point in our existence where no longer can we stand by. We cannot be the bystanders. We are here to transmute and transform. And so as we step into our new worldview, I know that we are ready to articulate what that looks like. What does justice for all look like and feel like? And we send our love out in this moment to Kaepernick, who was the one who kneeled and his entire career transformed because he took a stand. I know that that doesn't happen anymore, that we can take a stand and know that we are protected and divinely guided and blessed. And as we stand with our brothers and sisters who are black, indigenous, people of color, all of them, any of them, and white people are all equal. There is no uh, different treatment for anybody. And it is magnificent. I'm so grateful I can see that. And I can feel how that feels in the world. And I can feel how that intention is sent out there right now. And it is growing. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful as I imagine Oh, just a diverse world of love and and we no longer have to segregate into specific factions of our of our living areas, our communities that everyone is together and and we're grateful because there is a healing that has occurred and this healing has occurred so magnificently so powerfully that we are not afraid i am no longer afraid i let all fear dissipate back into the nothingness from whence it came all the fears that are known and all the fears that are unknown anything that is preventing me from wanting to take a look is released back into the nothingness from whence it came as I realize I could be that 100th monkey and I could be the one that the world is waiting for, not could be. I am. And so are each of you. We are the ones we have been waiting for. So let's do this. Let's do this and let's set our intention each day. We'll set our intentions each day for ourselves and our lives and for the lives of the world and our planet. Set the intention to see and experience a world that has equal justice, equal rights freedom and liberty, happiness, and oh, so much more. And so thank you, God, for revealing this in my life. Thank you for bringing the words into, uh, into each of our minds and our hearts and our consciousness so that we might speak them to a greater degree. We might be able to share them with the world, with each other, and write about them and contemplate what that world looks like. And as we take our attention and focus off of the media, mainstream media, which is fear, so much fear, fear, fear. We take our attention off of that. We see what's happening. We know it's there and we are transforming it. We are feeling our feelings. We can feel that anger and transform that, feel it and, and uh, transfer it, push it into the energy that is going to create something magnificent in my life and in this world. Oh, it is so good. We are, when I know that as we experience this anger, we're just going to do more than vent because venting doesn't create what we want. It doesn't create something powerful. Venting is just creating more of the same thing. And so by uh, feeling our anger and, and using that anger uh, to channel into the areas of affirmation, of articulation, of a vision that is powerful, something beyond what we can even see and imagine right now.
So you've got to look to your friends. You've got to listen to things you haven't heard of before. You've got to have conversations that you didn't have yesterday. You've got to read new books. You've got to study and and talk to your friends and learn and continue that learning so that something new can come in. That new divine idea can come from the cosmos into your mind. And you can share that and watch it start to manifest in your life. Oh, I'm so grateful for this. I'm so grateful for the expanded awareness that has occurred here today. I'm so grateful for each individual watching and knowing that something has shifted and that we have been gifted and lifted by source. So thank you, God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, stretching out time for us in this moment. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for everyone watching, for everyone involved in this service. And I know that as we go forward from here, as soon as this service is over, we set an intention. What is happening for the rest of your day? How is this day unfolding for you? What are you up to? What is your intention? And so knowing that this prayer is complete, I send it out now to that loving and creative action of the law where I know it is done. Even before this word was spoken, it was already done. And it returns to us manifested fully because that is the way the law works. And so I wait in joyful anticipation and cheerful expectancy for my good and the good of all of life, as I say, and so it is.
Thank you so much. So beautiful. We so love your music. And so I want to remind everyone, as you can see the little ticker across the bottom, which was laurabermanmusic.com. You can go there and uh, connect with Laura at, at her site. So let's just send her some love right now, everybody. Woo! Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Woo thank you so much. And <laughs> apologies for taking us a little bit over. Um, and so now we will go into our, our giving affirmation and we're so grateful for your giving. I see we have a, a few donations that came in on Facebook this morning. So thank you for that. And you can, you can donate with the button here or uh, through PayPal. If you're called to Gina just posted that it's paypal.me forward slash CCCSL love. And so thank you. That allows us to continue to bring these uh, offerings to you. And we're so blessed. So Please repeat after me from the love of pure spirit within me. I bless this gift from the love of pure spirit within me. I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and my belief. It is evidence of my faith and my belief. It does great work in the world. It does great work in the world. And returns to me multiplied abundantly. And returns to me <coughs> multiplied abundantly. And so it is. And so it is. I don't know what happened in the slide, but there you go. <laughs> All right. And so friends, thank you so much. I'm so glad you were here with us today. And won't you know with me that you are never alone, that God is where you are right now and always. And all that you ever need do is look within and it is here you will find you are guided, sustained, directed, and inspired by a source that knows only good. Joyously, let us make use of these gifts and all that we think in all that we say, and in all that we do. And please repeat after me, something wonderful is happening as me right now. Something, something wonderful, wonderful is happening, happening right now. It is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in my body. Life is in my pocketbook. Life is in my pocketbook. Life is in my relationships. Life is in my relationships. I think it. I think it. I feel it. I feel it. I believe it. I believe it. I accept it. I accept it. I express it. I express it. Just the way that it is just the way that it is and just the way that it is not and just the way that it is not thank you life thank you life woohoo thank you laura thank you <laughs> blessings yeah. thank you so much everybody thank you everybody we're going to post uh where you can join us right now <laughs> over at zoom if you want to have some coffee and conversation laura's going to join us right laura yes i will i'm going to get my cup of joe okay great if you want me too Give us a little noodling on the way out. That'd be great too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm almost over there. I'm so glad.